In a grocery store, when a transaction is done, the data of the transaction is usually stored in the database of the system. The data store inside the database sometimes never fully utilize and are only archived for the sake of safekeeping. This not only happen in physical store but also happen online in e-commerce which consists of more accurate data of the user that includes user demography, address, payment method and also buying patterns. So, what can we do with the data? What we can do is to use these data to learn about consumer buying behavior because these data is actually very useful to learn consumer buying behavior. Consumer buying behavior is a very good source of information in which it can benefits business and entrepreneur. So, how can we actually utilize these data to learn about consumer buying behavior? From many of the methods, three of the methods that are able to learn about consumer buying behavior includes clustering, a priori and also artificial neural network. These method uses data mining technique in generating information based on the data available. A priori is a method to implement for predicting what is the among consumers common item. The principle of a priori algorithm is association rules. It uses iterative approach search through the database to generate all item set that shown up frequently. Here are benefits and drawbacks of using a priori. For the benefit, it is easy to implement and for the drawbacks, it requires more time to scan the database if database is large, other than that, a high specification computer is needed to run the algorithm because of the limited memory capacity to store all the data set. Clustering is a multidimensional statistical way to study the online consumer behavior. The main task of cluster analysis is to group or classify the objects into groups or clusters of similar characteristics. Hence, the properties of the objects need to be determined to characterize them. There are also some ways to differentiate between the similarities. There are a few algorithms in clustering which is dbscan, expectation maximization and k-mean. dbscan is a density-based clustering algorithm, given a set of points in some space, it groups together points that are closely packed together, points with many nearby neighbors, marking as outliers points that lie alone in low density regions. The drawback for using it is that it failed to produce the meaningful outputs even the parameters were being adjusted in several attempts. The EM algorithm is used to find maximum likelihood parameters of a statistical model in cases where the equations cannot be solved directly. The outputs showed the number of clusters produced was quite consistent and the frequency of individual clusters was also acceptable. The drawback for using it is that it requires both forward and backward probabilities. K-means clustering aims to partition n observations into k clusters in which each observation belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean, serving as a prototype of the cluster. The drawback for using it is that the number of clusters is hard to be determined. Artificial neural networks ANN, are forecasting methods that are based on simple mathematical models of the brain. They allow complex nonlinear relationships between the response variable and its predictors. A neural network can be thought of as a network of neurons organized in layers. The predictors form the bottom layer, and the forecasts form the top layer. There may be intermediate layers containing hidden neurons. Its benefits includes not require a very thorough data pre-processing and has much higher detection rate compared to the other data mining techniques. For its drawback, ANN requires many configuration and care when dealing with ANN, it is also time consuming to implement and take a long time to undergo the whole process so that the data generated can be accurate. Follow on will show how the methods actually work and what information can the method provide. Now, I am going to present the steps to produce the experimental results by using Weka. The modified the tested from WISTM lab is imported into Weka. It contains 40 instances. Each data has 42 attributes such as the product name, gender and age of the consumer. First algorithm to test is the a priori algorithm. The parameter is 2 to fit the data set. Then click start button to run the algorithm. Based on the result above, rules are made to show the inherent regularities in the data. The rules are presented in antecedent, then consequent format. The number associated with the antecedent is the total coverage in the dataset. 
For example, there are a number of 20 cases of biscuit, vegetables, and then buying fruit are most likely will be happening in most of the purchase in the store. Each rule will be supported by the number in the brackets on the end. The support is calculated by the number of antecedents, divided by the number of matching consequence. Next tested method is the clustering. K means algorithm is used to cluster in Wicca. This is the parameter for clustering. The optimal number of cluster for the datacet is 4, so that it can cluster in a more meaningful way. This is the visualized cluster. K means categorized the common gender, age and items purchased into the same cluster. In this graph, number of the cluster is the x-axis, while the different age group is the y-axis. The expert needs to further analyze the results whether the clusters are meaningful. The clusters can be extracted in many ways. For example, if change the gender group to x-axis, we can see that if a young male consumer visits the web store, there is the list of items that he will probably purchase. Other deductions can also be done, such as to attract specific customer group by offering discount on frequently buying items to them. Lastly, artificial neural networks aka ANN is tested. There are a few types of results can be shown in ANN by WEKA. In this example, the datacet is being classified by gender. The first result is the stratified cross-validation results. This part has the values of the accuracy of how the data set being classified according to gender. There is also Kappa statistic to measure how closely the instance is being classified. The second result is the detailed accuracy by class in ANN. It has further details of accuracy in the class of male and female. For example, true positive rate, false positive, F measure, receiver operating characteristics area and precision recall curve area to support the class. The third result is the confusion matrix in ANN. It describes the performance of classification on the dataset. A priori algorithm, it will produce the best rules along with confidence level of each rule. Through the rules, the market analysts able to determine which products are associated together and plan to market them for increasing the sales. As for clustering, as mentioned before there are few methods in the algorithm to perform clustering on the data set. The algorithm used in this implementation is k-means. The results show few cluster to indicate the different demographics have a different preference towards products. In this research, MLP is used for ANN based on the results, the results are not satisfying compared to other two. Thus, there are a few possible reasons that ANN is underperformed. The number of instances in this research is not sufficient as test data set and validation data set. In addition, ANN is using backpropagation to classify the data, the weight values are adjusted on each iteration. The values of weightage might converge into a local minimum but not the global minimum. In order to overcome that, the possible solutions are to add noise to the weights or increase the weight adjustment rate by using momentum. All three of the method indeed can generate results from consumer data and these results generated can be used to know more about consumer behavior. However, a priori unable to determine item that associated together with characteristics such as demographic. Furthermore, only in a priori and ANN have support values to increase the reliability of the results. In conclusion, all three of the method able to determine consumer behavior for a priori algorithm is convenient and much simpler as it can work only with transaction data. Whereas clustering considers other aspects of purchasing goods such as demographic aspects. ANN is quite complex and required many instances to get an accurate result from it. Finally, for future works, for this research are that the method will be implemented in an e-commerce store and determine the performance in certain period of time.